Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new, I'm Anna Mae and today's video is going to be my January favourites for 2018. I have six or seven things I'm going to share with you today that I've been using a lot over this month. Um, some are new, some are not, but I have books, makeup, everything like that in between. So yeah, we'll just jump right in. So I just have one clothing item and that is this I think it's a stepped hem turtleneck. Um, it's from Shein, and I'm pretty sure I've hauled it before. You can't see it that well because it is black, but um, it's got like a slip in the hem there, so it comes down slightly longer at the back. Um, it isn't labeled as cropped on a typical height person. It might be kind of cropped. I'm only five two and five three ish. So um, yeah, things that are like a little bit cropped or the right length on me. I love this. I don't wear the neck up though. I do fold it down. I just roll it down a little bit and I like the neckline that that gives a bit better. And it's super warm. It was really inexpensive. I really couldn't recommend it enough. I'll have it linked down below. I think it was it was definitely less than 20 euro. Yeah, it's really cute and it's really cozy and the sleeves aren't too long or too puffy either because I don't like that bishop sleeve that's in trend. So this was a really good find and I've been wearing it a lot. So the three makeup beauty kind of ones are First off, the Too Faced Cocoa Powder Foundation. I got this in a slightly darker colour. I was, I had one of these for a whole year. I used it pretty much every day to set my foundation um, or to just use it as foundation, but mostly to set it. And I know some people say that that makes your makeup cakey if you use foundation as a setting powder. But um, I have, you can probably even tell through my makeup, I have a lot of acne scarring. I've had pretty bad acne on and off for seven years now. So uh, that's, a, that's a long time now that I say that out loud. But I got this in golden light. I had had it just in light before, which is a little bit more cool toned, a little bit more pink. I'm definitely more warm toned, even though I am very pale. Um, like it takes a lot of bronzer and stuff to get me to the color I am that you see right now. So that's actually this golden light. It does oxidize a little bit lighter, I found. So it looks quite dark on, which I, I kind of like to like warm up my complexion. But um, it's, I'll open it up so you can see it. So you can see it looks fine here, um, but yeah, I love this stuff so much. I think it gives a perfect finish. It's what I like, even though I do have oily skin at the minute. That's kind of something that's maybe going to change with the acne treatments I'm doing, but um, I don't like a super matte matte look. So this is definitely a favourite, and although it's pricey, it lasts a really long time and really just does the job, so it's worth the money for sure. So this product is new to me. I got it for Christmas and it is a hair conditioner from Lush and I believe it is called Retread. Like a, a tire, you know, like, I thought that was a, your tire, the threads, but maybe it's the treads, I must be wrong. Um, but it is a heavier weight conditioner. So I have, this is not my natural hair color or texture. I have very wavy hair and it's like, darker you can see the darker bits underneath and um, so something like this is definitely very necessary the smell is kind of weird Um, not bad mm, yeah no it's not the best Um, <laughs> but I think it's the agar that you can smell but um, it's it's on a seaweed and lanolin base so although this is um, not tested on animals it is not a vegan product I'm not a vegan but I use mostly if not all like cruelty free products it's only what I buy now so um it is cruelty free but it is not vegan so just so people know that but it smells weird but it works like a charm it really really softens and just moisturizes the ends of my hair without having lots and lots of silicones which I hate if you've seen any of my other videos um yeah silicones are definitely best avoided if you can for your hair as well as your skin, but try this if you can. I don't know how much it is, it was a gift, but I will definitely be repurchasing it because I love it so, so, so much. Last kind of makeup beauty favorite is this nail polish from Barry M. I don't know if they have Barry M in places other than Ireland, UK, or like the rest of Europe. I'm, I don't think it's in the US. Um, It's very inexpensive brand. This is, there's two, different numbers that could be on this but it is the shade ballerina and it is just the regular nail paint this stuff is pretty durable it's very opaque and if you can see it's just a gorgeous color i don't have it on my nails right now but um what am i like uh, i have another barry m shade on my nails right now um i love it i know it's cheap and it's probably not good for you because it's cheap nail polish is not good for you but that's okay, it's very cheap. It's like three euro. So definitely would recommend that if you can get your hands on it. So the next two things kind of go together. Um, 
it is this Longchamp Le Pliage, and this is not actually mine. There's a story with this. So this is the small tote, I think, because it has a long, it's like the long handle. Um, I'm not exactly sure what color this is, but there's a story behind this. This is not mine, this is my mother's, um, and I borrowed it for our, I was going on a trip to Paris, uh, with my best friend and you can check that out on my Instagram it's at anmay.yt and um, yeah I needed a bag like this size that would fit my camera but was light and she let me use this because I had always said I'm gonna save up and get myself a Longchamp La Pliage this one this exact one um, because I think it would be so versatile my mom was like oh that's such a good idea bought it so point but I'm still mad about it now she's like you you can just use it whenever you want I'm like no grown <laughs> to buy my own so I probably will be purchasing my own at some point because hers is actually all like stained to pens and stuff on the inside which I wouldn't do but this is so so good um and one kind of unfortunate thing I have to say about this is um it is really really great if it's my camera if it's everything and it has a really solid zipper and you can button it over closed and wear it on the crook of your arm and it's a good size for a small person i have a big problem with finding tote bags that are not roomy enough or they're huge and they look ridiculous when i carry them because i'm not a very big person so great thing about carrying a bag like this in the city is that you can carry it on the crook of your arm and it's very comfortable to do that you can keep it at the front of your body so you'll see in all the Paris photos, again on my Instagram, that I'm carrying this mostly on the crook of my arm because that's like how I like to carry bags. But it's also the safest way to carry a bag because in Paris you will get pickpocketed. And unfortunately, when I was in Paris, I had an amazing time. It, it is, it's a favorite. Okay, it's a favorite. Paris is a favorite. We'll pull out, put it on the list. I had an amazing time. We went to Disney and maybe I'll do another like Paris travel, what you should do in Paris, how to do Paris in a day. Cause that's what we did. And it worked out very, very well un until the last like hour. My friend got pickpocketed, um, it was like a split second thing, pickpocketing always is, she had her phone in her hand, she was looking at City Mapper, and she always had her phone being held in her pocket because she didn't want to leave it just like chilling in her pocket, because um, it was so cold she had her hands in there the whole time and she was wearing a backpack, actually a long -term backpack, but that's why I would suggest using something like this so you would always keep putting your phone back into your bag and not into your pocket. She just took her hand out of her pocket for a split second to put her metro ticket into the machine and she felt someone come up behind her and she was like, oh is that guy trying to jump the turnstile? And um, when she came through, she just put her hand in her pocket and her phone was gone and it was only two weeks old. So that's a very sad little story, but that's another reason why bags like this are really great for travel. Even if you would prefer to have your hands free, so you could just, you're going to want to have your phone on you all the time for photos. So, or directions or things like that. So that's why I would really suggest actually having a little tote bag. Um, and this is so light, so it's great, as I said before, for carrying a camera. I carried my DSLR in this all day. To go with that, my mom got this for me after Christmas. She found it in a boutique, like in an after Christmas sale, and it's this gorgeous little bag tassel. Um, it's I'm pretty sure this is yeah, for sure it's pleather because I know she probably would have checked that out. I don't wear that much leather, um, but it's got like this little faux silk kind of scarf tie that's all twisted and it's on this gold ring and I just love that she got it in pink because pink's my favourite colour and it's got kind of yellows and blues in it as well and it went so well you'll see in those Paris pictures as well on this bag it just looks so cute and I also have a bright yellow bag that I use quite a bit in the spring and summer and I know it's going to look so good on that as well like it's going to be different because it's like pink and yellow but um with a bit of yellow in this I think it's going to look really nice and I think it was about eight euro but I I'm considering like attaching like more charms and things like that to my bags now because it really adds something different and um, I feel like it makes your bag a bit more identifiable if someone were to steal it because that was one of the things I definitely put this on my bag for in Paris because pickpocketing is so bad it's crazy so be careful Um side note French police officers are very attractive there was not one ugly one in the building just gonna put that out there but yeah, bag tassel anyways. So my camera battery just died. I just had to charge it a little bit just to get through the end of this video. So sorry if things look a little bit different or I'm sitting differently or something like that. The last two things I have to share with you are a notebook and a book. 
So first off, the book that I have been reading is What is Populism by Jan Vernon Wooder and I'd heard a lot about this book. The Washington Post says it's an essential book. I did make a list of all the books that I'm reading. I made a video on it which I will link in the cards up here. Um, all the books I am reading over the next while. Honestly this book actually exceeded my expectations. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's a book I'm going to reread for sure with a highlighter this time because I just loved it. Um, I really like how it does have some case studies but really it's focusing on populism as a phenomenon not on Donald Trump because that and you know and Erdogan and stuff like that because it kind of bothers me that everyone has become so Trump centric and everybody's an effing expert now. So um, I don't know if I said this before, I study politics and yeah, things like this are definitely up my alley. Uh, it's a small enough book, thin book, um, a lot of it because it is more academic, like we're talking a lot of it is actually like that much of the book is actually just references. So it's a pretty easy read. Um, okay, I wouldn't say it's an easy read, but definitely, definitely worth the read. Um, super interesting and I was afraid that it would be too uh, left-wing because a lot of things like this can be but it's not at all and yeah just overall really really enjoyed it and it really was informative and educational so loved this book. So then the last thing I have is this notebook um, that I got as a Christmas present and it's like it's gold foil on the sides and says shoot for the stars and it's got foiled stars on it and um, I'm a notebook hoarder I didn't know. I also have a planner channel which I'll also link in the cards. Actually I'll just link it at the end um, but I have a planner channel called Anime Plans um, and this won't be really included in that but I've started um, I've started kind of writing things in this notebook because um, I'm going to be hopefully hopefully graduating soon so um, yeah I've got to like get on that. So this is kind of my to-do list kind of book for the next under a year really but 2018 is probably going to be a weird year is kind of what I was saying 2017 was amazing Um, you can look on my Instagram at anime.yt if you want to see um, like I have 2017 like highlights so um, like story highlights yeah 2018 is probably going to be a weird year Um, I'm really hoping I graduate I don't know if I passed all my classes which isn't the best um, and I still have another semester to go but I should be done in May and then I would have like graduation ceremony in like October, early October, late September, so near my birthday. And yeah, um, nothing is definitely, like nothing is set in stone until it really happens. But I'm looking at visas right now and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of scary. And that is what this is about. So uh, yeah, I, I realized I hadn't really address that but that's kind of what this is for um, and I'll probably when things get a bit more in motion start to make videos on that because it's kind of a confusing process so yeah I definitely want to get started on that and I will be doing it alone I'm not doing it with like a group of friends or anything so um, yeah I think I'm going to start making videos on that so um, yeah it's a weird one but I'm just hoping that it all goes well. So that is it for my January favourites. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, as I said, 2018 is going to be a weird year. It'll be good for YouTube content because I will be at home a lot more. But um, follow me on Instagram at anime.yt. It's linked down below anyways. And yeah, subscribe to my channel to see more from me. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.